I am a fan of science fiction uh, TV series and one of those I like is Battlestar Galactica, the, the second series, the reimagined series. And I particularly like this sentence that kind of explain a major part of this show. And the senten sentence is, all of this has happened before and all of this will happen again. And what I like about this, it speaks about us, human being, and how we have this propension to exaggerate or overinflate our perception when we witness or being part of a special event. We'll say, well, never before this or never again this will happen. This is the first time in the history of humankind that something. And, and even Pentecost, Pentecost often fall in this category. We, we know the story of Pentecost, the group of of Jesus' disciple after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. Well, they're all gathered under the same roof, and then uh, the Spirit comes in, there's this fire, there's wind, and, and then they open the door and start to proclaim the message on the marketplace and convert a lot of people. And we will say, well, this is uh, God doing something completely new. There's there's a rapture here, and there's a turning point in the mission of God. This this is a, a creation, a moment of creation, a, a burst that will bring something new. Uh, the disciple that who received the Spirit will do something they thought they would not be able to do. They start to preach it with authority to speak themselves. And yet, when we go back to our Bible, we discover that's not the first time that God, that the divine manifests itself through fire. Two quick example: uh, when Abraham makes a covenant with the Lord in Genesis, well, there's a sacrifice and to manifest the presence and that God accept this sacrifice, the pot has a fire in it, the fire pot. And one very uh, famous case is the burning bush with Moses, the divine that God, the Lord, manifests oneself through fire. Also, it's not the first time that common men, ordinary men, are inspired, are empowered to share their faith, to speak about God, to speak in the name of God. There's a long tradition of prophet in the First Testament that follows similar pattern. Also, it's not the first time that people mock or reject those who are speaking for God. In the story of Pentecost, um, some mock Peter saying, well, he's drunk. Well, we look at the prophet and almost no one is our lesson. And in some case, they're persecuted. They want to be killed. They're not welcome overwhelmingly. We lack perception. We lack this ability to look at, at the big picture, to understand that all of this is part of a continuum that has different steps, different phases. In our book, The Great Emergence, Phyllis Tickles used this image that every 500 years or so, we go through this big rummage cell, this big garage cell. And these days, we are in the middle of one that, are, that is not that different from the one that we have in time of Reformation or the one we probably have in time of Pentecost. She used this image because that's what we tend to do, most of us humans. We accumulate, 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 accumulate to the point that we discover that we are surrounded by and, and, and overwhelmed and, and filled with things we don't use anymore and there's no more space. So we go through this big purge. We let go of a lot of things to 
to make space for something new to to emerge and then what we start to accumulate accumulate and and so on <laughs> so this is sort of a cycle as what we witness in the bible and what we witness today it's a cycle pentecost i strongly believe is not a new beginning it's not the birthday of the church but just another step in the journey of god's people they were the time of the prophet. They were the time of the disciple in the past. And there's us today. And there's many that would say, I would say, fit the description and, and walk in the shoes of those disciples and those prophets. We might think of uh, in the 20th century of Martin Luther King, for example, or the work of Canada, Canadian Jean Vanier, uh, theologian Karl Barth, and, and so on. And also, interestingly, during this time of the year, during the time of Pentecost, there's a lot of youth in our congregations that are confirmed. Well, we also understand through this, this confirmation that there will also be others that will follow us in the future. And we understand that they will not, we don't expect them to create something new, but to renew the covenant that was made and to bring their own words, their own sensibility, and to be part of this big cycle. So for this, all those reasons, we're not expected to do something new. What we are have to try is to interpret events, signs surrounding us with the lens of our faith and our spirituality as the prophets and the disciples did in the past. It's now our turn to share our faith, to speak up, to bring the good news, to be moved by the Spirit. And hopefully, Others, like others, will follow us. And for this, that's why I can say all of this has happened before. And all of this will happen again. Pentecost is not necessarily one point in time. It's part of a cycle, a continuum of the history of the people of God. And that's it for today. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.